there are a lot of myths about how technology and education intersect and overlap and sometimes conflict. So I'd like to talk about some of those myths and get your reactions. Um, I mean, here's a great starting one. Teachers have to be experts in these tools before they ever introduce them. True? False? What do you think? I, I, I strongly believe that that's false. I mean, okay. I think that one of the best ways, one of the things that where I've learned the most is learning from my students. I love turning them loose and seeing what they're going to come up with because when they are driven by their own passion and interest in using the software or you know doing an exploration, whether it is something like Mathematica or diving into Wolfram Alpha, then they learn more and they're not hindered by what I'm telling them to do. Abby makes some really good points about that. Uh, on our campus, we teach with Mathematica and um, the, the particular classes that are being taught it's required that you teach with Mathematica, but not everybody who goes in to teach a class knows Mathematica to begin with. So they're, they're going in, and the first time that I went in, I, I went in, I didn't know Mathematica, but suddenly I'm teaching with it, and I learned a lot from my students. I, I really did. I, they, they were doing things that I never thought that students would be doing, and they were looking at problems in a different way and asking really insightful questions, but the, the technology is... I think if you know too much, you might try to constrain what the students do with it. That's a really interesting point. Okay, let me try another question on you. Uh, using technology tools, especially these sophisticated ones, uh, Mathematica, Wolfram Alpha, does that take that takes the social aspect out of learning? True? False? Real? What do you? What have you seen? I, well, I think it's completely false because using something like Wolfram Alpha has introduced another aspect of so sociability into the learning. Give me an example. So like, like I was telling you, students can share the hyperlinks. Mm -hmm. And so when they write um, a blog post about what they're learning or when they build a mind map online about what they're learning, they can just really quickly incorporate the mathematics by sharing the hyperlink to the Wolfram Alpha part that shows the mathematics. Right. Um, so it's actually made the technology that we have a lot easier to use. Right, right. Abby, you were talking uh, earlier about actually using AIM with some of your students. Does that, that, that adds a, an element of sociability to math class that certainly wasn't there when I was taking math. Yeah, for years my students and I have done um, online instant messaging chat sessions before tests. And um, with something like Wolfram Alpha to be able to then, sh I'm, I'm brainstorming what I want to do in my next chat session with the students. Um, I, ha we, I haven't used Wolfram Alpha that much yet, but from like what Maria is describing, I can see that if I want to share a graph or do something like that, it would be easy to cut and paste that in. With Mathematica, the kids are constantly collaborating and um, they're helping each other. And especially, it actually ties into the previous question. I'm no longer the expert. So when a student says, well, I want to learn how to do more 3D graphics, then I say, okay, well, ask you know, Tom, because Tom is like the pro at 3D graphics. He's done more with that than I have in the last six months, so why don't you go ask him? Or our students who want to, you know, get interested in sound features and analyzing music, and so then certain students learn that um, those features and functionality and they help each other. I can just yeah. here. There's a saying that we've been kind of pushing in the blogosphere and on Twitter, which is uh, meant for education, and it's everybody teaches, everybody learns. <laughs> And it's meant to not only be a, a kind of a call to action that students should be engaged in their education, but also that instructors should remember that their learning doesn't stop when they get their degree. Right. This idea that you know I shouldn't use the technology because I don't know how to use it completely. Right. What, what one of us knows how to use anything completely or knows a subject completely, we're always right. still I learning. I learn stuff about mathematics from my students all the time, and I've been using it for way many years, more years than they have been. Yeah. I mean, that must be a little bit of a relief sometimes to not always have to be the person with all the answers, right? right. And even, even when there's topics where you do have the answers, having the technology, having these kinds of tools lets the students discover the answers for themselves. One of my favorite stories that I like to share is um, a couple years ago I was working with a middle school class of 7th and 8th graders. And we were using Mathematica and doing a variety of projects. And one of the projects was to, we were learning how to use Manipulate and the students were creating graphics and animations where, and their, their job was to create some object and have it move along a path. 
Most of the students were in algebra, maybe geometry, so they were really familiar with lines and somewhat of a parabola. But really quickly, they got bored with everything moving in straight lines or parabolas and said, I want my objects to move up and down, up and down, up and down. I said, well, you need trigonometry for that. But then by the time like the third kid is asking to make things move that way, I said, OK, I need, I need to show them how to do this. But rather than teaching them trigonometry, I said, you guys know how to make a manipulate. Well, here's this function called sine, capital S-I-N, and I gave them the full structure, A sine of B X minus C plus D. I said, use this. Your job is to use manipulate to figure out what A, B, C, and D do. And in one class period, by the end, I had seventh graders explaining to me <laughs> frequency and shifts and amplitude. And I said, you just learned trigonometry, which normally takes like a week or two in like an algebra two or pre-calculus class. And they just ate that up. And then of course, immediately they wanted their objects not to move straight up and down, but to follow the path. And now they were begging me to teach them calculus without realizing that's what they were asking for. It makes a huge difference when they know why they're doing what they're doing. Right. I'm not just they had a applying a formula. <laughs> I've actually got a purpose here. But I think Abby's story also brings up the importance of play. Mm -hmm. Great what point. she did was let students play right. with the math. Not tell them how the math should go, but let them play with it. And I, I think that one of the, the great things with Wolfram Alpha is that the, we're all still playing with it. We still don't know exactly what will give you an answer and what won't, or what the right phrasing is necessarily. And so even when I go to Wolfram Alpha, I'm playing with it. I'm saying, okay, how can I get a limit? Can I get a limit out of this? What do I have to try? And then I start playing this game. Well, can I cut out this text? Will it still get me the limit I want? Will I, you know, and so uh, I, th I think there is an element of play there. We hear a lot about technology tools require teachers to learn more things, which all seems like a lot of work, but we forget that it becomes more fun too, right? Yes. Which is why people go into teaching in the first place, which is why we enjoy education. It can be rejuvenating. It can be mm -hmm. rejuvenating, yay. Okay, here's another myth. Um, today, students are so technologically slick and savvy that they don't need this stuff. They already know everything they need to know about technology. Completely false. Completely false, okay. Completely false. They can text. They nope. can MySpace and Facebook. <laughs> Occasionally they, they have one or two other technology skills, but for the most part I find that the students that we're getting in at the community college really don't have a lot of practical, what we would consider kind of career skill application of technology. Right. Now, Deborah, you're seeing kids uh, at the university level. You're also seeing a lot of online students. What, uh, what are you seeing? Well, I'm just thinking that the students know a lot about technology, that's true, but we're not teaching technology. We're, we're teaching them math and, we're te and technology. Some technologies are a tool that they're using. So we're really just teaching them to use the tool effectively to enhance their learning. OK, so you're saying it really doesn't matter whether they are technologically savvy or think they're slick, because we're simply using this collection of tools rather than, um, rather than teaching them technology per se.